different. Okay? All right, so have a competitive bet. The second part is the market potential. That's who we serve. And that's the number, number three in your packet here. That's our target market. Who are we going after with this? And the more niche, the more narrow you are, the better off you can be. So in God we trust, all others must bring data. There are two ways to do financial projections. I'm going to do this in two and a half minutes. Uh, one way is what we call the breakdown method. And the breakdown method says, who's my total market? Who's my target market? And then how many of those clients can I convert into sales? So if we look at the top here, this is for a uh, maternity clothing store, Fargo, North Dakota. It's hypothetical, I didn't actually do the research, I'm sorry. Women population, about 73,000. Women population in the Fargo Moorhead area, 73,000 people. Target market, who's our target market for a maternity clothing store? Women, right? But specifically, pregnant women, except that one guy that was on Oprah. Uh, <laughs> pregnant women, so how do we look up pregnant women in Fargo Moorhead? We can go to Innovis Hospital, we can go to Comericare, or what do they call them? Thank you, and Essentia. Essentia and, and Sanford, and, and we can say, what if, and according to the birth records, how many kids were born last year? Well, it's about 9,500 kids. Okay, so we know 9,500 pregnant women are roaming around this city or this part of the market. Now we need to know market capture. So it's part science and part art, right? The part science is the data, and the part art is, now I've got to make an assumption about what I'm going to, what I'm going to do. Well, let's say that you think you can capture 20% of the market. Well, how do I determine that? Well, let's say that, that I'm a high-end, I'm a high-end maternity clothing store because I've been shopping with my wife for a white shirt when she was pregnant, and we went to 19 stores and couldn't find one. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm a guy. When I need a hat, I walk in, I grab a hat, and I walk out. <laughs> 19, okay, so I'll quit. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I have no empathy in here, I bet, you know? I mean, I'm in the wrong room. Where's the men's thing? Uh, 20%, the way we assume that is because it's a, uh, a, a uh, premium market, right? If you're charging a higher price, you're going to get a smaller portion of that market. Now, if we were going to do secondhand consignment uh, maternity clothing, maybe you could assume a 50% capture. Now, does that mean that 50% that of the people are going to buy all their maternity clothing from you? Of course not. Of course not. It just means that 50% or 20% or whatever are going to shop at your store. 20% shop at your store, that's 1,900 customers. Then we have to deter determine about the amount of money that they're going to spend over the period of the year. So we, I have a student that I, I teach for another college for one of the nighttime type accelerated things. And they did this, and they went to their girlfriends and and their, their parents, friends, and they said, um, when you had your baby recently, how much money did you spend on, on maternity clothing? And the average was about $550, okay? This wasn't like a, a, a super scientific, you know, longitudinal study or anything like that, but, but out of about 20 or 30 women, they said it was about 500, 550 bucks. Now, we've captured 20% of this market, now we have to determine how much of that money are we gonna capture? Out of the $550, if we're a high-end store, are they going to buy all their clothes there? Of course not. They're only going to buy the ones they need to wear at work or do an event or whatever. So they, they said, but we have a higher premium, we have a higher price, so we had to adjust for that. And they said about $200 is what we're going to assume. 1,900 customers, $200, that's about $380,000 in sales. Who in this room believes that they're going to have $380,000 in sales? Very good, smart, smart group. It's not about being right. It's going to be wrong. It's going to be wrong. It's about having a reasonable range of sales. A reasonable range of sales. If you remember nothing else from today, remember reasonable range of sales. Why? Because the number one be re reason why businesses fail is they run out of cash. Why do they run out of cash? Because they think they're going to sell more than they're going to think. Why do they think that? Because their range of sales is not reasonable. There are two aspects to doing sales projections. One of them is amount. We've just determined a potential way to, to figure out the amount that we can make. 
The second one is time. How long will it take this company to get to $380,000 in sales? Will it take them six months? Will it take them 12 months? Will it take them 18 months? Will it never happen? Everybody's a little bit uncomfortable with this whole thing. That's normal. But the more research you do, the more confident you become in a reasonable range of sales. You'll say to yourself, can I do $50,000? Of course I can. Can I do $150,000? Yeah, that seems fairly reasonable. How about $250,000? Eh, how do you know? Because you did the research, because you're the experts. The bankers are not the experts. The investors are not the experts. You're the experts. I'm not the expert. And I'm standing up here, right? I'm not the expert. I don't know. You walk in and say, this is what I love. This is my passion. This is what I know about. I've done all this research. What do you think my sales are going to be? I don't have the foggiest. I don't know. You need to know. You need to have a reasonable expectation of sales. You need to base that on assumptions. This is what contributes to the success of companies. It's not just a wild guess. It's not. It's going to be wrong because it's a guess, but it's not just a wild guess. The second way, so some of you are going, yeah, but what if I'm not in the Trinity clothing store in Fargo, North Dakota, dude, you know? Uh, well, if you have, let's say, a nationwide market, okay, a nationwide market, and you say, uh, Valerie and I were talking about this the other day, well, if I could just get 1% of the cars that drive by this location, well, that's stupid. That's just dumb. Well, there are 8 billion people in the world. If I could just get one of them to, you know, each person to send me 5 cents. You think some of you didn't think of that already? You know, it's called a scam. It just doesn't work that way. So how do we do it in those situations? We build up. Okay? We look at what we need to run our business. We look at infrastructure. We look at uh, office space, employees, marketing budget, etc. And we start piling dollars up and we say, here's our break-even point. Now, we know what our break-even point is. How many customers do we have to call? How many conversions do we need to have to make it to that break-even point? So we have a, a breakdown method and we have a build-up method. One of them dr is driven from market information and it's limited by competition, right? The customers we have drive our sales and the competition takes it away, okay? And the other one is we're just pushing. We're just pushing, pushing, pushing. We know that we need to get five customers this week and five the next week and five the next week until we get to that number and that's what we're going to focus on. Now, after we know that break-even point, we can look at the market and say, yeah, that only equates to 0.05%. Can we do that? You can still compare it to the market, but you can't drive down from the market because the market's too big. It's too big. Okay? So I'm way out of time. I'm five minutes over, but I started ten minutes late. So. <laughs> so here, that's what I wanted to tell you today, and I really, really appreciate you having me come on and talk to you. Thank you so much.